Hello everyone, and welcome to Windows Forensics here at Pentester Academy. In this video, we're going to talk about Netcat and how you can use it in order to exfiltrate data from your Windows subject to your Linux Forensics workstation. So the first thing you want to do is you want to actually get Netcat and install it to your response drive. Now, there are a couple of options here. You can go with the full version of Netcat that is included with Nmap. However, there's a small problem with that. The problem is that there are some dependencies with that version of Netcat. There is a standalone executable for Netcat that is available. And if you do a little web searching, you will find that it's located here. So I'm at johncreighton.org slash blog slash 46 slash netcat dash 4 dash windows. So you should be able to find this with a Google search. You'll notice this is a very old blog post from 2009, but it still works. I don't find the performance to be nearly as stellar with this version of Netcat. However, if you don't have to install a bunch of libraries that are not existing on the system, it's worth the reduced performance. It's also very simple. So if you scroll down to the bottom, you will see there's an option to download Netcat for Windows. If you go ahead and click on that, you will get a zip file, which you can unzip and install to your response drive. So I've already done that and I've gone ahead and installed it and now I will run it inside of my subject system which is running a virtual machine. So here I have my subject system. This one is running Windows 7 and if I open a command prompt I can go to my E drive and my E drive has a live version of Ubuntu and it also has a win response subdirectory. So this is actually a bootable drive, so I can use it for multiple things. So if I go to my win response directory and do a dir, I will see I have both win32 and win64, and I have the netcat zip file, and I've also gone ahead and extracted it. Also on this response drive, which we are going to build up over the course of this class, is Nmap. So if you have the necessary dependencies, you can try to run Netcat that is included with Nmap, and you might get slightly better performance. So that's kind of up to you. Notice I have this nice, small 61K executable. And if I look in the Netcat directory, I'll actually see the source code right here. Great, so how do I use this version of Netcat? Now, the flags are slightly different from what we have with the Netcat that you might be used to. So if I do a Netcat slash question, rather if I do a Netcat dash H for help, it will tell me what the options are. So here we're trying to connect to something else, Netcat options, host name, and the port or ports. I can detach from the console and run in the background, which is not what I want. And there are some other options as well. For our purposes, the only option we're going to use is dash W for wait. And this will set my network timeout because the default seems to be rather long. So let's go ahead and do a simple example. I'm first going to start a listener on the other side on my Linux machine. So on my Linux machine, I will start a netcat listener, and I'll say dash L, and I will listen on port 4455. And now it's going to sit here and wait. So on the other side, I will give it something to display. I will do a dir and pipe that to netcat and I want to go to the host 192.168.56.1 and the port will be 4455. If I go back here to my listener, you will see that I have received the contents of the directory. 
So the response from the dir command, and it's sitting here. And it will sit here for quite a while, mostly because I neglected to do one thing. I neglected to give it this dash w option. So I will repeat my command, and this time I will use dash w2. So my listener is set up, and I'll send my packets again. And you can see this returned a little bit quicker. And if I go back to my terminal, notice that my listener exited after displaying the information I wanted. Now, if I want to keep a running log of this information, I do not want this to just exit. I want this to stay alive. And there's an option for that. It's the dash K option. So if I rerun this with dash K, and I go back to my virtual machine, once again, the process on my virtual machine has exited, but I'm still listening. So that's a useful option for Netcat. Another fun thing I can do with Netcat, I can use Netcat to send files. And in order to do that best, I've actually set up a nice little automated system that will allow you to have a listener or two on your Linux forensics workstation. And then there will be some scripts that you can use in order to automate sending the responses from commands and sending files to your forensics workstation. And we will talk about these in future videos. Well, that's all for this video. As always, if you're enjoying these videos here at Pentester Academy, please tell a friend. We'll see you soon.